Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a quick video uh, in regards to Bill Gates. Um, I found this right here online, the patent for the coronavirus. Here we go right here. Um, it says the Per Bright Institute, funded by Wellcome Trust, EU, DARPA, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And here we have patent number 10.130.701 coronavirus, as well as these patents, U.S. Patent Collection for Perbrite. So I didn't know if this was fake. I was like, well, you know, when you find stuff online, it could be doctored. You don't know if it's legit. So I found um, this government website here where you can uh, look up patent numbers. So I actually checked it out. I'm gonna like look it up right now and search it. And it says the query was unparsable. Invalid patent number search. So I thought, hmm. Maybe this uh, up here is fake. So then I was like, well, let me check the other ones that are listed here. So I'm going to check this one, 10.507.237, search it. And that also comes up like that. And let me check all the other ones, 10.294 dot 277 search invalid patent number search and this is the United States government website to check for bat for patents so then let's check the other one 10.202.578 search invalid and then the, the last one, 9.969.777, invalid. So then I thought, hmm, that's odd. I guess maybe these aren't legit. And then I realized you can do an advanced search. So I looked at that and I typed this in, the Perbright Institute. I think I just typed in Perbright. So let's, whoops. Let's see what that brings up. Search. Hits 1 through 50 out of 130 patents. And sure enough, they all came up. They're all here. Coronavirus. It's here. There's 130 patents. They have 130 patents, and you could do these searches yourself if you want at home. So I don't know if they're trying to hide information if you search it by <clears throat> number. You know, I don't know why it's not coming up that way, but it's definitely, they're definitely here, and there's definitely a patent for it. And it says right here, funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So then I took a look and I was, I was t taking a look at the CNN interview. Um, let me minimize this and minimize this with Bill Gates. And I want you to take a look at this as well. So let's, let's take a look see what he's talking about so even in because folks look people who want sort of county by county or say you know well, let's get back online faster say well look in some states there's less than 200 cases in many states there there's less than, than 200 cases right now you're saying even in those states uh the same kind of shutdown needs to occur well let's say you have 100 cases and let's say you don't do a shutdown, then it grows 33% per day. So you take 100, you get 1,000, you get 10,000. It's exponential growth. If you're not stopping it, they, you, the sooner you in, engage in the shutdown, the easier it is to get to that peak. We have, we have not peaked uh, 
you know, the parts of the country that aren't shut down by the in late April, we should start to see the numbers peak there. They'll still be too high to open up. So you'll probably have to go another month to really get those numbers down. But any part of the country that has cases and, and truthfully, because of our uh, problems with testing, because uh, we're not prioritizing testing the right way, that a lot of those places actually so wait a minute now. It says Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation pledges a hundred million for coronavirus relief efforts. So wait a second now. You funded the problem and now you're funding the solution? Hmm, that's convenient. <laughs> that's convenient. That is very convenient. Uh that's definitely the Hegelian dialectic if I ever saw it problem reaction solution and why is bill gates so giddy and happy over a problem he knows that he had a hand in funding the creation of and by the way uh the coronavirus is a mild flu okay it's nothing to worry about but okay let's continue actually do have cases but even if they have the hundred that will grow uh, and people do cross county boundaries. And so basically the whole country needs to do what uh, was done in the part of China where they had these infections. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out again that states that had just a few cases last week uh, have you know over a thousand or sometimes two thousand cases this week to your point, uh, uh, Bill. The other thing I'm, I'm curious about, you know, we keep hearing that the virus is going to dictate the timeline. Uh, Dr. Fauci has said that. When, when you look at this virus, we got three and a half months worth of data now, 150 countries. If you apply all the analytics that a, you know, Microsoft, that, that all, all the analytics that we can possibly apply to this, is how this is going to sort of progress and end knowable? I mean, can you, can you give a, a, a clear answer depending on, on, on what sort of, uh, you know, mitigation measures we have in place? It's very likely that rich countries who uniformly throughout their country do a serious shutdown, that they will able to be able to avoid a high percentage of their population getting infected. That's what the exemplars like some of the... Did you see how he smiled when they mentioned Fauci? That is what you call the narcissistic smirk. He, he's like giddy with delight over a problem that he created and he's sitting here knowing that he had a hand in funding this bullshitting the hell out of these people um, I mean this is like complete insanity um, and why are they interviewing a mass murdering psychopathic eugenicist lunatic as if he's some kind of esteemed guest um, does anyone realize that they booted this guy out of India? They literally kicked him out of their country because he was killing all of their children testing out his vaccines. They kicked him out of India, okay? And we're sitting here going to this guy for some kind of advice? Does that make any sense to anyone with even one working brain cell? Anyway, let's continue the work in China and South Korea are telling us. Now, as you get to poor countries, the difficulty of doing the isolation, uh, where you live close by in slums, where you have to go out uh, every day to get your food, uh, it is going to be much, much tougher. And so, uh, you know, by summer, I think the rich countries that have been competently uh, led on this will not have to go back into shutdown. And, uh, you know, from the disease point of view, they'll avoid very large numbers of deaths. And so in that phase, uh, we still will have a challenge with the developing countries. One of the things that Dr. Fauci actually said in our last hour, which really concerned me, and I was asking him about the states that, you know, uh, I think there's more. Sorry to keep interrupting, but I just have to point this out. Look. 82,000 coronavirus cases in the U.S., 1,194 deaths. Okay, 1,194 deaths, 
is not a pandemic when 8,000 people a day die in the U.S. and 50,000 people get the flu every year. So how is this a pandemic? This is not a pandemic. This is like a regular day. It's, this is like less than a regular day. <laughs> this is so absurd, it's like not even funny. But let's continue. Uh, sorry to torture you by making you listen to mainstream media news, by the way. Here we go. More than a dozen or so that have a just a one or 200 reported cases. He was saying how it's critical that, you know, that those states that they have testing there, that they test and that they contact, do contact tracing of all those who are known to be infected to really right now when the numbers are still low, track it all. And then I asked him, he was using a lot of uh, um, sort of f uh, future verbs about things needing to happen or plans. It didn't sound like, I asked him if it was actually happening now. He said it needs to happen a lot more. From what you're saying, it's got to it's got to be happening right now, because if there's not that contact tracing in places where it seems like it hasn't really hit, we're going to see it hit. That's right. I mean, we wish that we in shut down even sooner in places like New York, then you would have uh, not had the medical overload that uh, is such a, a huge challenge for them. Uh, unless you're going to partition the country, the whole country has to be in this together. Uh, and we're not, you know, I don't see us making people not cross county lines or something like that. So it really is how many cases are in the country and have we adopted in terms of testing, uh, testing prioritization, contact tracing, the right things. But the good news is we're seeing that countries that pay that price, which is a gigantic price, mm. then uh, the percentage of Chinese that are infected is like 0.01%. And so now, you know, stores are open there and closed in the rest of the world. Uh, you know, that's, it, I'm not sure you call it good news, but I totally agree with what Dr. Fauci said. He's been a, a very positive voice about the numbers driving this. And those numbers are very uncertain because of the, uh, still the disorganization of, of the testing capacity and where it's directed. You know, it, it strikes me that, I mean, you, you know the world of public health very well, and you know the, the, the world of the economy very well, financial world very well. They, they seem to be pitted against each other, and I don't know, really know much about the financial world at all. But I think there's this idea, Bill, that, that maybe you can be a little incremental here, right? Yes, we need to uh, listen to the public health guidance and all that, but can we be a little incremental, start getting some things back to work, you know, so that we don't, you know, really devastate the economy that much? What, how, how, do you, how do you respond to that? Until we get the number of cases in the country down to small numbers where we can be doing testing and isolation against those small numbers, we need to make this our top priority. And it is super painful to drive this very high degree of social isolation I, I call shutdown. The middle course really isn't there because it's hard to say, oh, go back to the theater for a week. You know, maybe or maybe not you'll be infected or infecting people. Uh, you know, until we get the certainty we've hit these low numbers, uh, you know, I doubt even if you told people mm. uh, that they should be buying new houses and cars and, uh, you know, hanging out in restaurants, I doubt uh, they're going to want to do that. You know, people want to protect older people. They want to protect their parents. And, and so the sooner, you, you know, we take this medicine, which is tough medicine, the sooner we'll be out of it and not have to go back into it again. And, and just, just really, I'm sorry, uh, just really quickly, when you say low numbers, I mean, are you talking about actual numbers? Or are you talking about spread? Because this, this is a virus that can spread to two or three people. That's a lot. I mean, if it spreads below to just below one person, is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about actual numbers? Well, the absolute numbers better be pretty low because you're going to have to have the testing capacity to take the remaining positives, see them early, and so you're not getting that exponential spread. And that's why looking at the other countries uh, who acted sooner uh, and in some cases did not have to shut down to a full degree, that's where the lessons are. 
you know, uh, you know, they can show us, okay, what was the medical history so you see if asymptomatics are spreading. But yes, the absolute numbers are going to have to be fairly low and we'll, we'll have some degree of caution. We won't open up completely overnight and, uh, you know, because we don't want quite the full exponentiation, even off of the small base that we'll get ourselves to. In, I, I don't want to be political in any way, um, but just in terms of for folks who are out there, you know, and, and looking forward, I always think it's better to know just factually what's coming down the pike than, uh, you know, then it's good to have hopes and aspirations, but it's good also to know what's actually coming down the pike. For people who are, are believing or imagining that, you know, uh, in middle of April or early April, people are able to gather together in churches for celebrate for you know Easter celebrations or you know go back to work in a regular way. Is it sounding like you're saying that that's not re you don't believe that's realistic? No, it's not realistic. The numbers are still going up. Uh, it, that only happens after the numbers have peaked and are going down a lot and getting down to an absolute level. Uh, you know, there are some good things happening. The work on a vaccine, although that probably will take 18 months, that's going full speed ahead. Our foundation is funding that. We're looking at getting vaccines to everyone in the world. So in, in, the, in the long run, that is the key thing. Uh, we had a really positive result that... Well, 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 Bill Gates has the solution. He's funding the vaccine for the... And he also funded the problem. Wow, isn't that clever? Wow, wow. <laughs> oh my God. Here we go. People were wondering, did you have to have a medical person swab you in this way that they stuck it deep in your nose? We were able to prove, which the mon on, F on Monday the FDA made official, that if you do a self-test uh, where you don't, we have to have the medical work with personal protection equipment. That self-test is as accurate as the one where the medical worker gives it. So that means that uh, by self-swabbing, uh, we'll be able to get a lot more tests done uh, and only be limited by the uh, PCR backend capacity. So there's, you know, there's good news coming. One of the therapeutics, although none of them are proven out, but there are quite a few. We have a, a things the foundation created called the Therapeutics Accelerator to really look at thousands of compounds and make sure we focus the uh, human trials on the ones that have the most promise. So, you know, innovation, which some of which we could have done in advance, but innovation really is happening. But, you know, if, when you look at those numbers, the U.S., you know, now with the most cases, uh, at, you know, there is no state that has gotten to the point where their numbers are flat and are going down. And the testing capacity is means we're quite blind uh, to a, a lot of these cases right now. So, okay, okay, my my ears hurt. I I can't take it anymore. <laughs> um, let me explain something here. First of all, viruses are not airborne. So you can't get you can't catch a virus by walking around other people. It's it's not flying through the air. That's not how it works. Okay. Secondly, if Bill Gates is coming to town, you better run. Okay, you better run cuz people are going to start dying. Okay. Putting Bill Gates in charge of your health, that's like having Joseph Stalin babysit your kids. Okay? No one would line up for that, okay? Do you want a mass murderer babysitting your kids? Obviously not. So do you want a mass murderer in charge of your health? Uh, I don't think so. And for those of you that don't know, Mr. Gates here is also the one that created ID2020, which is in the vaccine. The, the, the chip in the vaccine uh, for this mild cold. Then you have to ask yourself, why do you need a vaccine for a mild cold? You don't. You don't. You just go rest for a couple days and you're, you know, you're on your merry way. You don't need a vaccine. This is all a bunch of nonsense. They're pushing their evil agendas. They're trying to force their, their stuff on us that no one asked for, no one wanted. If Bill Gates wants to force us to take his vaccinations then uh, and, and get us chipped, 
then uh, how about we chip him first and he gives all of us the remote control to his chip uh, to, to make it in the interest of equality. If that's what he wants, uh, you know, that that would be fair. So let's do it that way and see how that goes. So this guy is a megalomaniac, psychopathic freak. Look how giddy. It's like he's overjoyed with delight about his masterpiece, uh, his mild flu, and, and how it completely bamboozled the public. And he's sitting here on TV smirking at these journalists. And, and why are these so-called journalists not asking him the tough questions? You know, this is just total insanity what's going on right now. Anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thank you.